Hello, creatives. This is day 29 of our daily creative practice, and I hope our creativity is getting contagious. Today, we're working further on the cover of our altered book, and it is so exciting to play and have fun. Yesterday, we created some of this on the back, and we're going to continue on the back. But after we closed down yesterday, I went ahead and created some of my front cover. And I did the same thing, only I just put a bigger piece of the napkin on the front. And I also did, let me get this close, I did some stenciling with molding paste as you can see, and then I did some watercolors over top of it. I did these two areas because it was a Christmas napkin, and I wanted to get rid of the holly that really made it stand out as Christmas. But we're going to do much more on the front here, and we're going to continue also on the back. So let me show you. Talking about molding paste, if you want to continue working on top of molding paste, um, this is what I was using. It takes at least, I would say, a good hour, depending on how deep you made the molding paste. This down here, this part, was just kind of a skim of molding paste, so it dried probably within half an hour to 45 minutes so that I could work over it. But this one was kind of heavier. There's a lot more embossing there. I think you can see the difference. So it took a good hour or so to dry. But of course, this has been left overnight. <laughs> So, I'm going to do some other things on here. You can kind of see this, and you can see that it doesn't dry white. It dries uh, opaque, but it's a little light. It's a little light in coloration. So, I just want to add a little bit of color to that. We're going to do some stamping here today, too. So... I've got a whole bunch of stuff out here for us. So I'm just gonna come in here and lightly brush over this. And it doesn't, doesn't do too much. It kind of stays in a little bit, rests in the crevices, but on this um, lighter, not as deep, it doesn't do much, so I'm going to come in and go into some yellow and keep it a little bit drier. And that makes it a little more pronounced, doesn't it? I hope I'm painting on screen for you. And so maybe watercolor is not the best thing to use for this. Hmm? <laughs> Perhaps not. Perhaps we should get into some of our acrylics and see what they do. Let me start with this dark one. And what I think I'm going to do, this is a navy color. And... I'm just going to go very lightly here with my fingertip. And I've got other things to do with this. Whoops, that was a little too dark. And okay, that's kind of a little better, isn't it? And if it gets too dark, we can always come in with our towel or baby wipe and take it back. So I kind of like where we're going with that. Let's move down to the bottom area. And ah, oh, that kind of revealed that totally, didn't it? And I'm just using very little of the paint on my finger. Very, very little. 
but that has really made a difference on both of those, hasn't it? Let me get some down in this area. So again, play and explore. And I'm probably gonna come in tomorrow and put a little gilding paste maybe over this. Give it a little bit of shine. That's why I kind of wanna make it a little dark right now is so that I can get into some of that lighter of the gold tomorrow. Whoops, a little too dark there. But if you know me, you know I like rustic and I kind of like to go with what nature brings me. So I think that's pretty good for now. Let me clean my finger off a little bit. I'm gonna kind of leave that to dry and we'll play, we'll putz with this some more. We will putz with that some more tomorrow. And I want to just add, we, we, we stenciled some of our flowers. We put some of our colorway in here. So now I want to come in and just add some more of the elements that we put inside. And we definitely use this stamp. So let me turn it upside down. As you can see, there must be a depression in the middle of that, so it didn't get it very well, did it? Okay, so let's come in here lightly. And maybe in this area, stamp that. And of course, that didn't work beautifully. Sometimes, I told you, I'm the world's worst stamper. That one worked a little bit better but there's obviously some kind of depression in that stamp. So let me carry that over to the front or maybe even to the, maybe down here because some of this is showing through some of the actual writing and stuff that was on the spine. So let me see if I can get some of that in there to make that go away and come over here and just plop <laughs> and if it doesn't work we will come back and work over that at some point in time so it works a little bit not great so maybe I'll just dab some of that along the edges. I kind of like that because that kind of continues our theme over the edges. I swear, I swear, I swear that I am going to learn how to get a fully stamped stamp at some time during 2020. <laughs> I promise you that. Promise myself that. Okay. So, let's see what else we want to do. Let's take this little circle one. And see if I can make a little better impression with it. And I kind of take it off the side. And that does a little bit better, doesn't it? Let me come up in here. Yeah, we're making a lot better work out of that one. I think there was something wrong with that stamp somehow. Okay. Come right in there. All right. I think we're doing okay. And any of you all that are expert stampers, let me know. Let me know some ideas 
and share some tips and tricks with me because I am just learning stamping. It was kind of like when I first started stenciling. I, I was a hand drawer, so getting into um, stenciling took me a long time as well. So, oops, I forgot I wanted to put some words on here. There is altered on here, so I love that alter. So I'm gonna put that down. Whoops. Sometimes I'm just all thumbs. It's one of those days, I guess. One of those crazy days. hope that works. So where should I put that? Maybe right by the bird. Oh, it worked. That was pretty good. So I think I better put that on the back somewhere also. So maybe I will come in here in the middle of this where it didn't work and put altar. Oh, good. Good, good, good. I think that's good. Now I'm a little bit happier with that place. So I'm learning, folks. I've got all this stuff everywhere, all over my studio. And I haven't played with a lot of it. Funny, funny, funny me. But we're going to play with it this year as we de-stash and declutter and de-everything. So here's another trick I did want to show you today is one of my favorite things to do with any kind of painting that I do is I love to get what I call a really good hand and that means that it feels good. I don't want this, I don't want people to feel this and feel little bumps and dirt, um, dust on it. So I like to just smoothly softly, gently sand with a paper bag, a stiff paper bag. So I never throw those away. And any chance I can get a paper bag, I always, always save it. And that just makes it feel so much better. doesn't sand down, but it does take any, like, dust particles or a hair or fiber you might have gotten in there that you don't want in there. So that's just another tip and trick from my painting days when I painted murals on people's walls. I am so excited about this, and I hope you're as excited as I am. I just love, love, love what's going on here. I will see you tomorrow. So get into your contagious creativity and pass it on. And for now, may joy be with you all.